listening to When Christians Speak Online Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Today's voice crying out in the wilderness, prepare ye the way of the Lord. When Christians Speak is dedicated to lifting up the name of Christ Jesus and spreading the good news. When Christian Speak Talk Radio is a non-profit ministry, we are dedicated to spreading the gospel of Jesus through our programs and special guests. We exist through the generous support of our listeners. If you are being blessed through this ministry and would like to give a love offering, go to our website and click on our donation page. Your donation will be processed through PayPal. Our prayer is that you may prosper, be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Unto the Lord, for he As a 501c3 nonprofit ministry, all of your gifts are tax deductible. So go out to our website, www.whenchristianspeak.com. God bless you. Hey family, this is Minister Jordana Cunningham and I am with my mama, Pastor Pat Randall. I am opening up her show today. Thank you, madam, for letting me open up the floor. I appreciate it. My pleasure. So we are here for another episode of Declaring the Finished Work. Hallelujah, praise God. Yes, and we are continuing on the topic, Conversations Along the Way. And basically what we're doing, we're just sharing the process, our process along the way, how God has spoken to us, what the scriptures have revealed, the maturing process, what it's like to go through challenges and to get to the other side of it with a greater understanding of who God is and and who we are in him. And so we're just going to continue on that, and I'm going to ask my co-host here to open us up in prayer. Bless his holy name. Hey, Jesus. Hey, boo. We just thank you for this day. We thank you for life and health, for the very air that we breathe, God. It is only by your word and by your thoughts that we are able to just think, to breathe, to even be, God. So we thank you for our very being, We thank you that this time is blessed. It is completely covered by your spirit, God. We thank you that those who are listening and will listen, Father God, will be set free, Father God, renewed, Lord God, that they will get a greater understanding of how to move throughout this earth and this time, God. And we thank you, Lord, that you are continuing as we minister to others, that we are also ministering to ourselves, God. So just have your way in this time. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. And I guess I should be thanking the uh, inconsistency and the indecisiveness of our federal government, (laughs) which has allowed my daughter to be available to do these conversations along the way because she's a furloughed uh, federal government employee. Mm. Amen. So it was an opportunity. And one of the things that it shows me that we don't just go through things that there is something because God knows ahead of time. Amen. He knows exactly what we're going through. And if we stay connected to him, he will reveal what we should be doing in a particular time. Amen. Amen. And he's also the stabilizing 
power in our lives that keeps our emotions and our thoughts intact, that we are always in a state of hopefulness, and that we're at peace because the peace that Jesus has given us is a peace that the world cannot take. Amen. It cannot, it cannot take. And so we live in this, in this peace. And it's, it's something that you learn through the process. You don't all of a sudden wake up and start to operate in this peace. And you don't wait until... Uh, some catastrophe or some trouble or some immense challenge mm-hmm. comes along mm-hmm. and then all of a sudden you're trying to practice peace. We have to practice peace all along the way. Yeah. And even where I am right now. So even though I am at peace, I actually had to encourage myself because, of course, I have to make phone calls to creditors and say, you know, I can't make the, you know, can't pay this bill, can't pay that bill. And and even like I literally, I made a phone call yesterday and I had to like, before I made the phone call and started dialing numbers, I had to say, I am favored. Like when I make this phone call, I'm going to reach someone and I'm going to be favored. So no matter what happens with, you know, whenever I go back to work or whatever, I have to know that because I'm a child of God, I am favored. And no matter how much I do or don't have in my bank account, I am favored by God and I'm going to be okay. Amen. Amen. So today, as I was thinking about where we're going to uh, kind of flow, uh, I think that we should, would you look up that scripture about mind renewal? Which Renew, transformed by the renewal oh. of our mind. And I believe it is a Romans, mm-hmm. it's a Roman scripture. Mm-hmm. And and we're going to read that because the process is about transformation. I believe Christianity has has finally began to transition into teaching where we're understanding that it's not about just altering our behavior, changing where we go and the people we associate with and changing how we dress, changing how we speak, but there is something that happens on the inside of us that only God can produce. And what we are learning to do is to be a surrendered vessel Mm -hmm. and allow Christ in us to be that glory. Mm Mm-hmm that we are looking for and that we, because a lot of times when we try to engineer our holiness and our righteousness, we end up being self-righteousness and very, very judgmental. Mm -hmm. And we don't understand that it's by grace that we have been saved, not by works. Amen. No man can boast. No man can boast. Filthy rags. Because it is all the work of the cross through our Lord and Savior, Christ Jesus. Amen? Amen. So you want to... um... Um, So uh, it's Romans 12. I'm going to start reading at verse 1. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that ye present your bodies as a living sacrifice, wholly acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Amen. Amen. After reading that, what sort of jumped out for you? So this is a pretty, you know, well-known scripture um, you know, in, in Christendom. Mm -hmm. And, um, I know that, um, earlier on in my walk, um, I used to interpret the way the scripture, um, meant to me. I used to interpret it in a way where I felt like 
I had to like work really work really hard at something um when it says uh in this the por this part of the verse um present your bodies as a living sacrifice wholly acceptable unto god which is your reasonable servants um so i coupled that with the teaching i was hearing you know about you know people places things don't do this don't do that don't go here you know don't say that don't look at that don't dress like that mm -hmm. and um don't fornicate listen all those things. And so I, it, the way, the lens in which I was looking through it, um, it was, it kind of put me in bondage. And that is not the, the goal or the purpose of the word of God. And it took some time and some um, develop, developing of like intimacy with God to understand um, in reading not just this scripture, but, you know, all of the surrounding scriptures and, and then knowing the heart of God that, what this scripture is asking, it's not that we have to get up every day and like check off lists of all the things that we haven't done or, you know, that we've made sure that we are holy because the work of holiness is what Jesus did. And so part of the process is to rest inside of the finished work of Christ. But yes. sometimes when you read scriptures, especially if you read scriptures um, in isolation and you aren't getting the full picture, you will put yourself under like extreme um, pressure and extreme expectations of what you're supposed to do and not supposed to do. And that was one of the things that I did with this particular scripture. But thank God I'm in a place now where I can rest mm -hmm. knowing that, you know, the work of holiness and, and the work of sacrifice is something that God does in me. And then the fruit of it comes out of you know of my you know my behavior is just a fruit of what's happening and what's what god is changing um in me on the inside amen amen and it's like years ago it's been a long time now but um i used to uh be a cigarette smoker and i knew i needed to stop smoking cigarettes and for several years, I went through this on and off process. I was good for a while, and then I something would trigger it, and then I felt like I needed a cigarette, and then I would I, I would go back. And once you smoke one, you dabble a little bit, and you think, oh, you know, if I just smoke one, I you know, it'll just be that one. And then you end up in that addictive behavior mm -hmm. begins again. And so I had to get to a place of, of, of frustration that I just gave up. I just said, listen, Lord, if you want me to stop smoking, then you are going to have to do it. And basically, that seems to be all that he was waiting for. He was waiting for me to give up trying to do it on my own. And one day, I can't even say if it was gradual or if it was instantaneous, but the next thing I know, I no longer had a craving or a desire for cigarette smoke, smoking. And after that, I never went back. Once, once the Lord does something, it's a done deal. Absolutely. It's a done deal. And you have to, what, what, in order for me to start smoking, I have to deliberately de have to decide, even though I don't want it, I'm going to do it anyway. Right. Even though, even now at this point, the desire is gone. Right, because I don't, right, I don't have a desire. So for me to go back, I would have to be just in total rebellious and saying, well, I'm, I'm going to do it just because. I'm, right. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just exactly. Because. Just, right, right. Let me see, let me see if it still tastes the same. Like, right. why, why? Why? Once you get free, stay free. It, amen. Once you get free, you stay free and you move on to the next thing because there is always something oh, else. Oh, glory. Ain't that the truth? And see, that's the other thing, too, is that resting in the fact that you are in process. Because the process is 
the renewing of the mind. The renewing of the mind that allows the transformation to take place. Because God is not going to work against our, our, our will. He wants us to surrender, for us to lovingly surrender. And when I say lovingly surrender, I mean trust. Trusting him, trusting that he has our highest good and that he's always looking out for our best result and that we can trust in that. And so when I turn my life over into his hands, I can rest. I, I can rest. I can stop looking and measuring and criticizing I can rest and just watch him do what he does. And in the process, I keep my mind renewed as I'm going through the process. And part of that process is knowing that there is no condemnation to those who are in Christ, Je Christ Jesus, who walk according to the spirit and not, and not the flesh. And I'm, I'm not reading out of the Bible, so, you know... I'm paraphrasing, <laughs> right? But that's that's the uh, the meat of of that particular scripture. So we have lived so much in condemnation that and, and guilt that we feel that if we don't do it, that there is something wrong with us. If we don't condemn ourselves, if we're not feeling guilty. But if you're walking by the Spirit, and that's another thing we should talk a little bit about, because we say walking by the Spirit. What does that mean, walking by the Spirit? For me, walking by the Spirit is, I take everything that God says about me, and I accept it as real. He says, I'm more than a conqueror. He says that he will never leave me or forsake me. He says that I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. He says that I'm seated in heavenly places with Christ Jesus. Amen. That as Jesus is, so am I in this world. Amen. And so living in that truth always reminding me because it's not like there is a, um, a, a a battle that will cease to happen but your flesh is always going to that carnal side is always going to try and war against it but each time we we root up and we tear down Thoughts that come against the, the knowledge of God and who he is and who we are in him. We are weakening the flesh. Amen. And which is what we want to do. We want our spirit to be the master mm -hmm. of our flesh. We tell the spirit man, our spirit man, who we truly are, we tell the flesh what we will do and what we won't do. Right. And that's living by the Spirit. Also, there is a, a relationship in the Spirit realm where there are no words, but when we are in worship and we are in a place of quiet and peace, acknowledging His presence in us, and around us, there is an unseen and an unsaid activity that is taking place. Now think about it in terms of like gravity. Mm -hmm. Gravity is unseen. Absolutely. But it is a power or a force that is always in operation. In operation. Amen. So let's look at 
some lives that were transformed. Mm -hmm. I just picked some uh, certain people. In the interesting, we, we were having this conversation about men and women in the Bible. Because they spend more time talking about men in the Bible, in the scriptures. Um, and there are no epistles written by women in the Bible. But it's not that they didn't write it. Historically, there are documents where women who were Christians did write, but at the time that the Bible was was created and brought together, women didn't have the right to, the same rights as men did, which is something that is shifting and changing, interesting enough, in, in, in the body right now. Amen. So, um, who do you want to talk about first, though? Well, okay, here's here's a list of the names that I, I wrote down. Where do you want to start? Who do you want to start with? Now, each one of these people, actually, because there's nothing new under the sun, so each one of them can, you can probably relate to something within them. Absolutely. And so there's hope for all of us. So you don't ever think like, oh, God can't do anything with me. I never get my act together because we've got a sample of everybody here that represents just about every t type. <laughs> okay. And God transformed their lives. Absolutely. So where you want to start? Well, actually, I want, I want you to talk about Mary Magdalene, but I'm going to first start talking about, I don't think he's on the list, David. David, okay. No, I didn't put David on the list. Um, I love David because mm -hmm. what he brings out for me is that you can like know God and be in relationship with God and still mess up. Like so some of these folks in the Bible, you know, you know, they found their healing and their transformation and they just took off running. Right. And they became these, you know, great people of God. And they just kept going. Not that they didn't, you know, mess up or make mistakes or whatever. But David was one who... He did major he, stuff. Listen, major he, mistakes. He was chosen from very early on in his life. He knew the call in his life from very early on. You know, stepped into the call. Was, you know, worshiping God and going <laughs> through all these things. And messed up. Like, and not just like once, but like several times. Like major mess ups. And so I appreciate David's life because it shows me um, that even even for those of us, because I think sometimes there is this portrayal that once you come into relationship with God, like you aren't going to make any like really bad decisions. You may make like small bad decisions or, you know, you know, I'm air quoting mistakes, mm -hmm. but um, that you aren't going to make, you know, any major life destroying, you know, <laughs> changes. And David, listen, read the story. If you don't already know the kind of stuff David did, listen, the man was murdering people. It was crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, stealing people's wives, it was it was a mess. It was a hot mess. And, and God still loved him and God still called him a man after his own heart. So what I love about it and what it, it encourages me is that because, you know, sometimes we can, um, you know, do this condemning thing where we'd be like, oh my God, how can I do this? Like, I know God, how can I be here? How can I end up in this place when I have a relationship with God and I know who God is? And um, and then I think about David. Well, I, I ain't murdered nobody. So, you know, I'm in pretty good company. I'm in pretty good company. That's all I'm saying. So, well, you haven't physically murdered anyone. Physically. Now, in my head, <laughs> listen, listen, you know that if, if looks could kill. <laughs> uh, uh, but, um, so it is, it's encouraging that um, for those of us who are on the journey, who, who already do know God, um, that you still may make some some pretty significant um, bad decisions, mistakes, whatever you want to call them, but that nothing is out of the reach of God. It doesn't change your identity in God. It doesn't change your placement in God. He is who who he says you are 
no matter what your behavior says. Right. So right. you are a child of God when you're making good decisions. You're a child of God when you're making bad decisions. You're a child of God when you when you feel holy. You're a child of God when you don't feel holy. You know. So whatever it is and wherever you find yourself, your placement in God never changes. Amen. And, um, you know, when you were saying that, you know, we make mistakes or we make bad decisions or what, whatever, uh, there's this thing in Christianity that they feel if you don't say the word sin, that somehow you're downplaying your actions. Mm -hmm. And you're not really, because all sin is, is error. Error. You're operating outside of God. You're op operating outside of who you are as a chi child of God. And that's all that is. It's just like repentance. You know, they, they want you to use that word repentance because it's a word that has been so sometimes is made to to seem to be something more than what it really is and what it is is a changing of the mind metanoia one day you were going this way in your thinking and now you're going in another way it's just a changing of the mind and so um, it's interesting, you know, what, what, what we do and how we use words and how we use them to cast a certain shadow over people, uh, to make them feel that you're actually not repentant unless you're condemning yourself. Right. Or so you're taking when, out the whip and like slapping your back with the cats and nine tails and you know. Yeah, and, and which people have crazily done that historically and Christianity have felt the need to beat themselves because they didn't understand the duality that was going on in their lives. Um, but... It is time for us to stop dealing with the leaves on the tree and go straight to the root. Uh oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Because if the root is not planted in good soil, mm -hmm. then it's not going to bear healthy leaves or so. if it's a fruit tree it's not going to bear healthy fruit so it's all about establishing this 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 soil this this foundation for our roots to go and our roots have to grow and go deep in in god amen well let me go before i go off on that cuz that can be a whole nother Mary thing Magdalene. right there I'm going to look at um, Mary Magdalene. Now, Mary Magdalene is, well, she is, she's, first of all, she's a disciple. We don't often hear, when they talk about her in messages, we don't often hear it, but she was, she was a disciple. You know, we, we talk about the, the 12 disciples, the 12 men that Jesus surrounded himself with, which... It's understandable because when you think about the culture, mm. if he had su surrounded himself with six men and six women, Chat. it, it would have been a big issue. <laughs> it would have been a big issue. Say so. Right. But who did he reveal himself first to? I'm just saying. Okay. I'm just right. saying. Yeah. Okay. Right. It was clear. It was clear. It, it was okay. clear. <laughs> so Mary Magdalene mm -hmm. was a disciple. <laughs> okay. Amen. Amen. But she started out as a prostitute. Oh, uh -huh, y'all. <laughs> That's right. And she was so into this that they say that there were seven, she had seven demons that were cast out. Mm 
that's how far in she was g gone. Because you hear about prostitutes who are just, you know, they strung out on drugs. They're doing all manner of stuff because they've gotten so deep into it mm -hmm. that they've completely lost themselves. Mm -hmm. And then they become possessed. And this is the state that Mary Magdalene was in when she came into contact with Jesus. Completely transformed. And I'm not sure if, because that's the other thing. The woman who was accused of prostitution, who, who was dragged out to Jesus in that story, she didn't have a name. So sometimes there are, historically there's questions like, was that one of the Marys? Was that Mary Magdalene that was uh, the one that was dragged out? Because in the accounting in that particular story, they don't really give this woman a name. But the transformation that took place in Mary's life because she encountered Christ is she was free from those demons. Mm -hmm. She became a disciple. Mm -hmm. She also was the one who first encountered Jesus at the tomb when he arose mm -hmm. and was given a message to deliver to the men who were sitting around questioning what had happened. Say so. We're not even going to go there today, y'all. We're not going there today. <laughs> she was also at the cross. She was at the cross because the only disciple, I think, other than uh, Mary Magdalene being there was John. John was there. Uh, because it also speaks of when Jesus from the cross said, Behold your mother and mother, behold your son. So we know, you know, but Peter wasn't there. Mm -mm. Peter was dealing with the fact that he had denied Jesus, so he was trying to pull his act together. And they just kind of scat they scattered. But Mary was there. She was part of the process of taking him off the cross and and taking him to the tomb and 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 that whole scenario she was present in that monumental moment a prostitute mm -hmm. who'd been possessed by seven demons had moved from one position well to another well position a new creation a new creation isn't that beautiful a new creation See, that's transformation. It is. It is. And I feel like, um, especially today and in, you know, the Western Christianity, what's happening, you know, in, in the Western world, um, is that we don't necessarily foster an environment where people are really encountering the transformative presence of God. Because that's what people need. Right. Like... There is nothing to discount good teaching and, you know, theology. All of that stuff is, is helpful. Yes. But there is nothing like encountering the presence of God that transforms your life. Right. And, and that is a necessary part of the process. You can sit in a church and listen to teachings all day, every day for the rest of your life, and nothing changes. Yeah, Mary didn't have that. But one touch or encounter or 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 moment with the presence of God can change your life forever 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 so you want to your focus is about touching Christ yes like the woman with the issue of blood right all she she just knew she just needed to touch she didn't even have to like hug him or just, she just knew that if she just touched the hem of his garment, just touched something about him, that her life was going to change. Transformed. Transformed. Because healing is a transformation. It is. You know, you may be your body, you may be sick in your body, but when you touch Jesus, your body can be transformed from a place of illness 
to a place of health. Absolutely. And also what I love is that um, in so many encounters with, with Jesus, um, because of course I believe he understands the process of humanity is that, you know, when people, you know, got healed or had an encounter with him, he wasn't giving a whole lot of instruction after that. It wasn't like, oh, you know, go connect yourself with me or get up and follow me. He didn't say that to everybody. He was like, listen, you've had an encounter. I know your life has changed. Go right. and be. Right. And so um, a lot of times we think that this transformation process has to also be like, now I have to, you know, go and join a church and, and join three ministries. And, you know, and I'm again, I'm not discounting, um, you know, locking yourself into ministry or the fellowship with the brethren. But um, what is most important is the encounter. It is paramount. I can't, I can't stress enough the importance of, of that encounter. And even, even right, right now, if you're listening and if you aren't, you know, connected to a church or connected to a ministry, but you have a desire to encounter God, you can have that encounter right in your home. Right. You can have that encounter in your car. You can have that encounter in your jail cell. Like I have, I have heard many a different type of uh, testimonies of people who it has just been themselves by themselves, wherever they were. And God and came Jesus in. Came into the All cell. you got to do is ask, reach out, listen, God knows your heart. And if you desire that transformative touch, listen, just reach out to him. And I promise you, he'll reach back. Amen. Amen. So let's talk about a terrorist. Paul? In the Bible. Yes. <laughs> Straight up terrorist, okay? Straight up. And we don't, we don't really say it, but he was a terrorist, a religious terrorist, which is what we're dealing with today. Hello. Okay? And Jesus used this man... To do major, I mean, we're talking major transformation. From from having people killed and stoned to death mm -hmm. and rounding them up and th putting them in prison. This guy became, he wrote so much of the scriptures that we read in, in, in the Bible. And he is also very transparent about the process. Mm -hmm. If you read about Paul's life and you can, if you want to start to read about his story, you can start reading in Acts also. There's, there's a mention of Paul in one of the gospels, but it doesn't really go into his story. So if you want to read about his real story, you can go to the book, the uh, book of Acts. And start there. In fact, in in uh, chapter 9, it starts to talk about his transformation. And so for people who have been criminals all their lives, they've been robbing and stealing, or maybe you were a pimp, or you maybe you still are pimping. Do they call them pimps anymore? I don't know what they call them. <laughs> but you get what she's saying. Mm -hmm. <laughs> they sell in women. Oh, and the sex trade, yeah. Sex trade, right. All of that. That, sex, that trafficking. I mean, all, all, all of that. That God can transform those. There is not a case scenario that he cannot transform. Absolutely. That's how great his his power is. And for us who are already in the transformation process, our goal should be to be open and transparent about our process mm -hmm. so that people can see the power of God that that. They will see the good works in us and glorify God who is in heaven because we were once this 
And now we're that. Not because we did it ourselves. But the love of God is so great that it can convert a terrorist. Absolutely. Because a terrorist is basically is someone who has a huge, a huge hunger mm -hmm. for this love. And in order to fulfill that, that, that hunger, they go after other things. And so they become things like terrorists. But then when they really encounter what it is that they're really hungry for. They become Paul. <laughs> they become Paul. An apostle. Hello. A disciple. Hello. A, a radical. Radical. Listen. Radical. Radical. All in. All the way in. All the way in. And okay, let's look at Peter. I love Peter. You you got to because Peter was this guy who was, you know, and and, and, and you I've met Peters. <laughs> Uh -huh. They like all in. I'm gonna do this, Lord. You know, I mean, just zealous, and then a hot mess at the same time. It's beautiful. <laughs> a hot mess at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Peter was having revelations, and yet he denied Christ. Mm -hmm. Oh, I would never. He. This is what he says because. <laughs> He's still relying on himself. Because in his mind, he was convinced. He was convinced. <laughs> he thought he was someplace he wasn't quite there yet. Exactly. And so, and that's a good thing about challenges. Because, you know, you be, you know, oh, I'm sold out for Christ. I'm this, I'm that, I'm that. And then something hits. And you be like, oh. Oh, I, I don't think I am where I think I am. Right. <laughs> Clearly, I'm not where I, I think I am. Mm. And that's a sobering thing. It is. And it's also, it should be a a humbling Absolutely. experience. Not an experience of condemnation, but a humbling experience. Recognizing I can, in and of myself, I can do nothing. Mm -hmm. In and of myself, I can do nothing. And so we have to be careful. Um, you know, we hear... These teachings. And we hear here's people bragging and speaking of their exploits with the Lord and how they did this. And, you know, great men. Of, I'm a great man of faith. And, you know, all of this, this, this self-promotion. And when you go behind the curtain... Mm -hmm. What you see is not what you see in front of the curtain. Because mm. behind the curtain... Hot mess. Struggling with the same things that you're struggling with. Absolutely. Just walk in humility. Walk in humility. Understand that you've been bought with the price. And that's the other thing, like with the law, like you'll never be able to fulfill the law, which is why Jesus had to come and fulfill the law. Mm -hmm. It is so much higher. We Man has a tendency to bring the law down into an arena where uh, they feel comfortable that they can fulfill it, mm -hmm. but... Jesus clearly came down and said, listen, if you even look at a woman mm. with lustful eyes, you've committed adultery. Mm -hmm. Or if you think about murdering somebody, just the thought. You think, right, exactly, e exactly. So God's law is beyond anything that we can ever accomplish. Ever accomplished. And I don't think that we even fully comprehend just 
how high mm-hmm. this law is that it is so far beyond. Mm-hmm. And like, I mean, the scripture says that his thoughts are as high as the heavens are from the earth. Amen. So if we can't even think his thoughts, Child. his ways are not our ways. Child. So what do you think about his laws? But what the law does do, it will humble you. Because you'll never be able to fulfill it. You have to give your life to Christ. Amen. And allow him to live that life through you. Amen. And in the process, there is this. Forgiveness Mm -hmm. that has to take place, not just for others, but for yourself, because you're going to falter. Listen, you're going to commit some sin. Sometimes we're committing sin that we're unaware of. Mm. We haven't even, it hasn't even become revelation that it's a sin. Mm. Thank you for the blood. The blood of Jesus that washes away. Mm. All my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I am redeemed. Thank you, Jesus. The price has been more than paid. Thank you, Jesus. I have been delivered. 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 Is there any other person you want to talk about? I'm. 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 I, I need to. Well, we've got 44 minutes, and I would like to pray before we go out, um, but. What about the Samaritan woman at the well? Talk about her. So, another beautiful thing about God, um, even though he is conscious of the time that he he was living in and conscious of the rules that were in operation, he knew his assignment. Mm -hmm. And when necessary, he went outside of the cultural norms, which was the story of the Samaritan woman, because um, they were not a people that, you know, Jewish um, persons associated with. You weren't supposed to go near Samaria. You weren't supposed to associate with those people. Um, And she was a woman. Listen, and she was a woman. So um, there were, you know, several things wrong with the encounter from the beginning based upon the cultural norms of the day. And because God knew his assignment, he knew when and and when it was appropriate to go outside of cultural norms Mm -hmm. to fulfill the assignment. And so the wonderful thing is that even when you think about today, when you think about what people's ministries may look like or how they are ministering to people or where they're willing to go, don't judge because you don't know the assignment. Just like in that day, they would have judged Jesus and they did judge Jesus about what he did, where he went, who he ate with, all of those things. They did not know the assignment. So even if you are called to um, something that is unconventional, something that other people may judge you for, or, you know, they may say, well, why are you going here and talking to those people or eating with them or going to this place? It does not matter if you know your assignment because what God will do is he will meet you wherever you are. And and the wonderful thing um, is that as many um, different people as there are in the earth is the, the amount of expression of God's love that is in the earth. So for every human being on the planet, the billions of us that there are, that is the billions of ways that he will express his love to, to his creation. And so... Which is why we don't all have to be alike. Hello. Please don't be alike. Please don't try and, you know, mimic or emulate what whoever God has created you to be, be that person. I kind of got off. That's where, that's where, that's that's where it took me. That was good. That was good stuff though. That was good. That was good because it was good to look at it from that perspective because what you did, you looked at it from Jesus's perspective. Mm -hmm. And not from the Samaritan woman who was the subject of the transformation that took place. Right, right. But in the transformation process, you have to be willing to go outside the norm. Absolutely. 
Because even in the world of Christianity, we try to get people to conform to a certain standard in a certain box. A certain pattern. A certain pattern. Mm -hmm. And so... If God calls you outside of that pattern, mm -hmm. because he may, if he's doing a new thing, it's not going to look like what's already there. So if he's calling you to a new thing, be confident that God is with you. Amen. Because... When Jesus came, he was introducing something new into the earth. And there were tons of people who rejected him. And most of well, all the religious people rejected him. They didn't even try to understand. Mm -hmm. They did not want the change. Mm -hmm. It disrupted their system and what they had put in place. That's right. And when people are comfortable with what they have established, they don't want anybody coming in rocking the boat. Absolutely. This is how we do things. This is what <laughs> it looks like. Mm -hmm. I don't know what you are doing. Absolutely. But it does not belong. Right. And so... There has to be a boldness and a confidence that takes place. And you can only get that in your relationship, that intimacy that you get with God because you will draw strength from him. In your weakness, you will draw <coughs> strength from him. Absolutely. So as we close, um, the couple of takeaways that I would say is always be humble because it is a process. We are all in the same boat trying to get across the same river. And so no matter where you are in your walk or where you are in your ministry, no matter you know where you falter, you are okay. It is a transformation process, right? And so we aren't always going to get it right all the time and that is okay um one of the other takeaways is um in the transformation process know that um god isn't ever surprised right you can't you can't you surprise can't disappoint him. him you can't surprise him there's or no such thing as disappointment there isn't and we sometimes think that oh my goodness i've missed it i've messed up but there is no surprises in god he knows the plan that he has for your life and and God is always smiling over you. He's always smiling over you. I know I've heard the um, example or analogy where when a parent is watching a child learn how to walk, when they fall, they don't scold the child. They know that it's a process. The child is learning how to walk. And so they encourage a child to get back up until they find their footing. And that's what God is always doing over us. He's always smiling us and encouraging us to find our footing. Amen. And... Um... <clears throat> What what you just said spurred the thought also that, you know, we're a new creation. The, you know, the old has been done away with. And now we're a new creation. And one of the definitions for this new creation is something that has never existed before. Mm -hmm. That's how knew it is mm -hmm. something that never existed before so we haven't even fully comprehended what that is absolutely we're in process we we haven't fully comprehended who the new creation is as us so before you start defining the new creation remember this is something that has never existed before. And we are actually stepping on the shoulders of those who've come before us who were in process. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And there will be those who come after me, after my daughter, because we're different ages. 
who will step on our shoulders and move to that next place. Because that movement should always, we should be going higher and deeper, mm -hmm. higher and deeper, higher and deeper. Because if Jesus said even greater things than the things that are, well, we weren't around to see it, but it has been recorded. All the things that he has done. He walked on water. He raised the dead. He healed leprosies. He opened blinded eyes. Casted out demons. Cast out demons. He did all. He did all of that. And he's saying that there's something greater, and he's leaving that greater for us to manifest. Put your shout right there. That's exciting. Eyes have not seen or ear have heard. All that, all that he has planned for us. Amen. So, Father, as we go out and we conclude this conversation, we thank you. We thank you for your presence because we know that you are in the midst of us. We thank you for your faithfulness, Daddy. We thank you, Brother Jesus. You're a friend. That sticks closer than a brother. We thank you. For what you have spoken to our hearts today. Thank you Lord. Even the unsaid things. Thank you Lord. That you have placed in our spirits today. That you have placed in our hearts and in our minds. We want to thank you for it. I thank you, Lord God, that this shaking that is taking place here in the United States with our government, that people's lives are being shaken right now through this financial crisis, that it is an opportunity, Lord, for you to show yourself strong and mighty in their lives. Thank you, Lord. Show them that whether they are abounding or whether they're being abased, that they have the victory in you. Thank you, Lord. That there is a law greater than the law that exists in the earth, that is in the kingdom of God, and we are subject to the law in the kingdom of God. You have blessed us. You are our provision. Thank you, Lord. You have shown us that you can bring water out of a rock. That you can pull a gold coin out of a fish mouth. That is who you are. Thank you, Lord. And so much more, more than we can even comprehend. Thank you, Lord. So I speak a rest and a peace over your people today. I thank you that they will trust you in this process and allow transformation to take place. In Christ Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So we are out. Thank you for being with us. Thank you. Glory to God. And prayerfully, I'll be here next week. God willing. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Have a great rest of the day. Peace. Bye.